السلام علیکم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دا سیونتھ لیکچر آن دا سیریز آف لیکچرس آن ایڈوانس کمپیوٹر آرکیٹیکچر ٹوڈے آفٹر اے بریف ریویو آف وٹ ایور وی ہیو بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ان دا فرسٹ ٹو پارٹس آف دا لیکچر دیٹ از دا کوانٹیٹیو پرنسپلس and instruction set architecture we will start with the new set of discussions here we will be talking about the basics of computer hardware design and design of uh, which will cover basically the design of data path section and control section prior to this we have been uh, talking about the quantitative principles of computer design where we discussed in details the parameters which can be used for measuring the performance and the benchmarks which are used to evaluate the performance of a particular system. Then in the second part of uh, our discussion we focused on to the instruction set architecture Basically, a computer design has got three basic pillars, the hardware design, the software design, and the instruction set architecture. We have already talked about the instruction set architecture, wherein we said that how an instruction is written, then how an instruction can be encoded, what are different types of uh, instruction words which can be used, whether uh, an instruction word is to be of uh, variable length or it is of fixed length or it is uh, of hybrid type. Having talked about uh, these uh, encoding techniques, we discussed some special instructions which can be used for uh, multimedia operations and for digital signal processing. Then we talked about the instruction set performance based on uh, the compiler design where we discussed the role of compiler in uh, translating the instructions from high level language to the instruction level uh, or to the machine level uh, language level. Here we discussed how the variables are allocated and how many registers are to be used for allocating different variables appropriately. Then we discussed in details the three different uh, data allocation techniques such as the local variable area, the global data area and dynamic uh, object allocation. With these basic discussions we concluded last time that knowing the quantitative principles and the instructions are architectures, we will proceed to the design of a microprocessor or of a processing system. Based on this discussion, today we will uh, focus ourselves, first of all, on to the basics of hardware design, where we will be talking about the basic building blocks of uh, a computer, the subsystems of a central processing unit, what are the steps which are used to design a processor, and what are the parameters of a design process. Here you can see from this uh, slide that basic building blocks of a computer contains three major sections, the central processing unit and two subsystems known as the memory systems and input output system. However, buses as we discussed in the first lecture are the group of conductors which are used to connect the subsystems with the central processing unit. So now we will be talking about the starting step of uh, the design of a processing unit. A processing unit at a higher level can be divided into two distinct parts, that is the data path and the control. As you can see from this slide, the data path is the path that facilitates the transfer of information from one part that is either register, memory or input output to the other parts of the system. The control part 
is the hardware that generates signals to control the sequence of steps and direct the flow of information through the data path. With these two basic definitions of uh, subsections of the central processing unit, I will first of all discuss with you what is a design process. The design of a digital system is relatively a complex process because uh, the digital systems for a processing section is very complex. Therefore, while designing a system, we always use the basic rule of divide and conquer. For this purpose, a top-down technique is used where the central processing unit is divided into two sections, that is the data path and the control. The data path consists of the arithmetic and logic unit, the shifter, the registers, where these components can be implemented by using uh, some combinational logic circuits, which is built by using uh, either uh, NAND gates or NOR gates or a combination of uh, AND or uh, NOT gate uh, circuitry. Whereas uh, the control logic can also be subdivided into small sections such as a combinational logic part and some flip-flops or storage devices which can keep uh, the history of uh, the previous operation of uh, the circuit. So from this point of view, for the implementation purposes, we always uh, proceed in a bottom-up manner, that is uh, starting from the gates. By combining different gates, we can build the ALU, the shifter, and the registers. Combining these registers, ALU, and the shifters in a particular structure, we can build a complete data path and similarly, a complete control logic can be designed and developed by using the principles of sequential logic circuit design. Combining these two parts, the design of uh, a central processing unit can be completed. So, with this much uh, information about this, as you can see now from this uh, slide, the first step is that we design the instruction set architecture, which is then followed by the use of uh, register transfer language to represent this instruction set at a hardware level. Then we select suitable implementation, that is the internal organization of uh, the system. And then we map the behavioral register transfer uh, level description of each instruction onto a set of structural register transfer level based on the chosen implementation. To start with the design of a processor, the next step is to define the control signals. The control signals are the signals which in fact control the sequence in which different steps are to be executed. The everything together is then combined up and it builds the data path and control logic. Now I will uh, talk about uh, how an instruction is being performed. An instruction is performed in two steps, or in other words, we can say in two phases, known as the instruction fetch phase and instruction execute phase. Both these phases are completed in number of uh, small steps. These small steps are known as the micro operations. For example, the instruction fetch operation can be completed in steps such as first the information from the program counter is made available onto the address bus for the instruction memory and the instruction code is fetched from the instruction memory. Then the program counter is updated in order to make it ready for the next instruction. Similarly, 
the execution can be completed in more than one step depending upon different types of uh, instructions as we have uh, discussed earlier more than one steps are usually taken. Now I will uh, tell you how we can uh, implement a data path. Data path is an arithmetic organ of the von Neumann uh, stored program uh, concept which can be implemented by using uh, different types of uh, structures. The three basic type of uh, structures are known as the unibus structure, two bus structure and three bus structure. Let us uh, first of all uh, consider unibus structure as you can uh, see it uh, from this slide. The unibus structure consists of uh, registers as shown uh, register uh, R0 up to R31. It uh, consists of uh, internal buses. These internal buses are the buses to carry address, to carry data and to carry some uh, control information. The arithmetic unit, the logic unit and shifter circuit. Here as you can see from uh, this uh, block diagram that each register in the register file, it has got uh, a load control line that enables the data and loads the register. It also contains a set of uh, tri-state buffers which in fact isolates the processing unit from the output section and it also has got some read control signals which are being enabled to buffer the information from one part of the system to the other part of the system. Here a typical unibus uh, structure is shown in this uh, figure where you can see that uh, it consists of uh, a register file having uh, 32 registers and each register is of 32 bits in size. Its internal bus is connecting the arithmetic unit, the shifter to the register file. There are a number of uh, other registers also as you can see from this diagram such as uh, the program counter represented as PC, the instruction register written as IR, the memory address register MAR, memory buffer register MBR as the name indicate MAR is used to buffer the address of the memory where from data is to be read and the memory buffer register holds the data which is to be written into the memory or which has been read from the memory. In addition to this, a unibus structure contains two additional registers as register A and register C. Register A is used as a temporary data data input for one of the operand and the register C is used temporarily to hold the result of uh, arithmetic and logic or shift operation. The program counter is also connected with the same unibus and considering this let us uh, now see how the instruction fetch operation and instruction execute operation is being performed. For this purpose, let us see onto this uh, slide. The instruction fetch operation is completed uh, in three steps, where each step is uh, performed in uh, one particular uh, time period. And the first step, which is represented over here as T0, during this step, the contents of the program counter are loaded into the memory address register. The contents of the program counter which has been updated as a result of the previous operation are being loaded into the C register. Then in time T1, the contents of the memory from the memory address register location that is M 
within square brackets m a r they are loaded into the memory buffer register this is basically the value of uh, or the code of the instruction world which is now loaded into the memory buffer register and the new contents of the register c which is the updated value for the next instruction that is loaded into the program counter and during the time step t2 the contents of the memory buffer register which is an instruction code is loaded into the instruction register for uh, the execution of an instruction as we have uh, already talked about in our uh, previous lectures that uh, different classes of instructions can be completed in uh, one or more than one uh, clock cycles so from this point of view for a unibus structure as you can see from uh, this uh, slide a uh, unibus uh, structure uh, instruction code can be implemented in either uh, three steps four steps or five steps and sometimes it can be executed even in two steps also depending upon the type of the instruction as you can see from this example that is the arithmetic and logical instructions which are uh, the register type arithmetic and logical instructions they can be completed in uh, three steps in the first step which is uh, t3 the contents of the register from the source address rb they are loaded into the temporary register a and then in the next step that is t4 the required operation is performed on to the contents of the register a and the value which is read from the register files register c and whatsoever is the result of this operation this result is made available in the result register c then in the time t5 the contents of c register are loaded into the destination register now as in this uh, unibus structure there is uh, only one bus available therefore uh, we cannot make data from more than one source locations simultaneously onto the bus therefore it requires some long time that is three steps are required to complete the operation however if the instruction is uh, still a register type but it is uh, say it requires only one operand for example uh, it is a not operation where the contents of uh, register rb say are to be complemented and the result is to be made available in register ra then this operation can be completed in two steps as you can see from here in step t3 the not operation is performed on to the contents of uh, register rb and the result is placed in the c register whereas at time step t4 the contents of c register are transferred to the destination location ra similarly other instructions like uh, load store instruction it requires uh, five steps here you can see that uh, the load instruction is written as uh, the load ra comma c2 within uh, round brackets rb means that as we have already discussed that this uh, instruction will be executed by adding sign extended the value of c into the contents of register rb and that gives us uh, the value of uh, the location where from the data is to be read and it is to be transferred into the required register which is ra for this purpose the following five steps are being taken which are shown here as during the step t3 the register rb is loaded into the register a then during the time t4 the sign extended value of uh, the constant is added into the contents of register a and the result is made available in register c then 
during the time t5 the contents of the register c which holds the address of the memory where from the data is to be read it is transferred into the memory address register then during the time t6 the required data is read from the address available in the memory address register and it is made available in the memory buffer register and in the step t7 the contents of the memory buffer register are then loaded into the destination register which is ra in this example so this basically shows that uh, a unibus uh, data path can execute an instruction in 2 3 4 or even up to 5 steps whereas the instruction fetch operation for all types of instructions always require 3 steps operation whereas now we will have a look on to the two bus uh, architecture for this purpose let us uh, see this uh, slide that is uh, a two bus architecture is one which has got registers and arithmetic uh, and logic unit which are identical to the unibus structure the structure contains two internal buses called the in bus and the out bus the in bus carries data to be written into the register and the out bus carries the data read from some register and it is to be made available onto the bus the output of the arithmetic and logic unit or the shifter is directly connected to in bus instead of through register c as in unibus structure the three steps which are taken to fetch an instruction from the instruction memory in case of uh, unibus system are exactly identical in case of a two bus structure but one step is missing and this step is uh, corresponding to the updating of the program counter and first transferring this value into the c register and then loading the c register into the program counter at the next stage so instead of this this is done directly because there is no c register in case of uh, unibus uh, architecture the other thing which you can see from here is that the register type arithmetic and logic instructions they are completed in two steps instead of uh, three steps as you can see from here in the step t3 the contents of register r b are loaded into register a and during the step t4 the required operation is performed on to the contents of register a and the contents of register r c and the result is directly made available into the register r a instead of first placing it in c register in the as in the case of a unibus structure it is directly transferred into the required register r a similarly the other instructions also take relatively lesser steps in order to complete the required operation similarly the performance of a three bus architecture is further better and simple as compared to the two bus architecture the three bus architecture is uh, shown over here in this uh, slide where you can see that uh, a three bus architecture has registers and arithmetic logic units and the shifters which are uh, identical to the unibus structure and two bus structure the structure contains three internal buses called the bus a bus b and bus c the register file contains two read ports which are directly connected to the bus a and bus b and it contains one write port which is connected to the bus c we will be using the uh, bus c or the bus w means the write bus interchangeably 
in this uh, our discussion. Furthermore, as you can see that uh, the registers A and C are not provided as A input and C output of ALU are directly connected to the bus A and bus C. The fetch operation in this uh, case is completed in two steps instead of uh, completing it uh, in three steps and these steps are as you can uh, see from uh, this uh, next slide in time t0 the program counter is loaded into the memory address register from the memory address register location the memory is read and data is made available in the memory buffer register and the program counter is incremented. All these three operations are performed in one step. There are three different buses available. Therefore, there is no constraint of data mixing of uh, from uh, one register that is from the memory as well as uh, from the program counter is present over here. Whereas during the time T2, as you can see from here, the contents of the memory buffer register are loaded into the instruction register. Similarly, the execution in this case also is very simple as compared to the number of steps required in case of uh, the two bus system and uh, one bus system. For this purpose, you can uh, see it over here that the execution can be completed in uh, one step for the particularly for the register type instructions because the register type instructions execution involve the data to be read from two operands, operand registers that is register RB and RC and the result to be loaded into the third register which is RA. And as all these three registers are from the register file, they are available onto the three ports. Therefore, and these ports are directly connected to the buses. Therefore, no additional steps are required and no time is wasted for this purpose. So now with this much uh, discussion onto the unibus, two bus and three bus uh, architecture, we will uh, focus our attention onto the parameters which are uh, used in the design process. For this purpose, let us uh, recall what we discussed earlier, that is the execution time of an instruction is equal to the instruction count multiplied by clock cycles per instructions multiplied by the time period of the clock. So if you look into this expression, which is uh, saying that uh, execution time is equal to IC, the instruction count, multiplied by CPI, that is the clock cycles per instruction, multiplied by the time period of uh, the clock. The basic constraint is due to the CPI, that is the number of clock cycles required to execute an instruction and the time period of each clock cycle and this affects the overall performance of the system. So now combining the concepts which we developed in our uh, earlier lectures regarding the measurement of uh, performance and improving the performance of a processor, we will see how we can use these concepts while designing the, while designing the data path for different types of uh, structures. As we have uh, noticed that the number of uh, clock cycles to execute an instruction affects the overall performance of uh, the system. Therefore, uh, we will uh, consider uh, the design of uh, data path for two different uh, types of uh, implementations. One is known as uh, single cycle uh, data path where the clock cycles per instruction is equal to 1 and this means that there is only one clock cycle available and during this one clock cycle we have to perform all the steps 
that is the instruction fetch and instruction execute. The instruction execute may be completed in number of steps and instruction fetch may also take uh, one or more than one steps, but there is a fixed time interval available in order to fetch and execute any type of instruction. Whereas the second type of uh, data path which can be possible which may give us uh, some better performance is known as multi-cycle data path because we have just noticed that uh, some instructions require only two steps in order to complete uh, an operation and some other uh, some other uh, type of instructions uh, require two or three steps and even uh, up to six steps to complete an operation if it is a unibus uh, architecture so this means that we can save on time in case of uh, multi cycle design for the execution of uh, different uh, classes of uh, instructions however now first of all we will discuss in details the steps which are taken to design a single cycle uh, data path whereas uh, in the next lecture we will be talking about the multi cycle data path for this purpose uh, let us uh, have a look on to this uh, slide and see what are the constraints of uh, the data path design this timing diagram shows the worst case timing of uh, single cycle data path worst case uh, means that uh, which can require uh, maximum number of uh, steps and for this purpose uh, this timing diagram has been uh, made for uh, the load instruction here you can see that uh, the clock to queue time that is the time which is required to get the clock stabilized and start the operation that is uh, it takes care of uh, the propagation delay of the signals etc the clock to queue time after the clock tick the program counter will present its new value to the instruction memory after the delay of instruction access time that means the time which is required to read the instruction from instruction memory the instruction bus that is the register rsrt with reference to the mips architecture instruction world they become valid then three things happen in parallel at this stage first the control generates the control signals second the register file is accessed to put rs on to the bus a and third in case of memory reference or immediate data instruction we have to sign extend the immediate field to get the second operand to be available on bus b now this timing diagram as you can see from here we assume that the register file access takes longer time than doing the sign extension so we have to wait until bus a valid before the alu can start the address calculation which means that it has to wait for uh, alu delay time with the address ready we access the data memory and after a delay of data memory access time the bus c or bus w as i mentioned earlier that we will be using this uh, word interchangeably that will become valid and by this time the control unit would have set the register write signal to 1 so that at the next clock tick we will write the new data coming from the memory from the address which is available on to the w bus in the register file so it is uh, clear from here that is in case of uh, single cycle uh, memory structure as it is clear from the timing diagram the memory address from program counter for instruction fetch and for alu for the data read or write operation they are available on the bus simultaneously however this gives rise to a very serious problem 
which is uh, known as the structural hazard. The structural hazard actually mean that it is due to the structure which is uh, available with us. There is one bus that is holding the address, but onto this bus, we want that the address of the program from the program counter and address for the data memory they should be available simultaneously. Now, if we are using only a single memory unit at the interface level, then this means that it will be having only one address bus and it is not possible to place two addresses onto a single address bus. This problem is uh, known as a structural hazard and this structural hazard can be avoided by dividing the memory into two distinct sections known as the instruction memory and the data memory. The instruction memory is a part of the memory which holds the instructions only, whereas the data memory is one which holds the values of the data. However, in case of uh, immediate mode instructions, the data, one of the data value or the operand value is made available along with the instruction, which means it is uh, the part of the instruction world. Now, with this much uh, information about the basic requirements of uh, the design of uh, a single cycle structure, let us uh, see how we can uh, design a instruction fetch unit and how we can design the instruction execute unit. For this purpose, let us first of all consider the design of instruction fetch unit which is shown here onto this slide. Here you can see that onto this slide, we are in fact using two different uh, adder circuits. One is connected uh, to the program counter and other is connected to the program counter after updating this. So this is basically done in order to generate the address of the next instruction world. The upper adder is used where one of the input to the upper adder is a number 4 because in this particular case we are uh, assuming that we are designing a instruction fetch circuit for an instruction world which is of 32 bits in size or in other words we can say 4 byte instruction world. Therefore, in order to find the address of the next instruction world, we always have to add 4 into the present value of the program counter. Whereas the second adder that is being used in order to handle the jump or branch instructions. We know this thing that in case of uh, branch instruction, the sign extended value given in along with the instruction word, it is to be added into the present value of the program counter. And the present value of the counter, program counter is always one which is available in the program counter after time t0, that is after adding 4 into the present value of the program counter. So, the second adder in fact adds the sign extended value of the immediate 16 bit data or 16 bit uh, address which is relative to the present value of the program counter and it finds the new value of the address. This new value of the address is placed in the memory address register and it is uh, as you can see from here the next step is there is a multiplexer which is using and this multiplexer in fact selects a value either from the upper adder or from the lower adder. When it is uh, executing a simple arithmetic or uh, logical instruction or uh, then in this particular case it accepts the value from the upper adder and in case it is uh, to execute a branch instruction, 
it accepts the values from lower adder. So the value available either from the upper adder or from the lower adder is written into the program counter and this forms the address of the next instruction word which is to be read uh, during the fetch cycle in the of the next instruction. Now let us see what is the basic design of a data path. The basic design of a data path uh, of a single cycle architecture is shown here. Here you can see that uh, the basic design can be divided into two parts. The first part is uh, written over here as the instruction fetch unit. The output of the instruction fetch unit is available onto a bus in the instruction register which contains different fields as we have already talked about uh, while uh, discussing the MIPS architecture instruction set uh, instruction word format. Here the addresses of uh, RT, RS and RD these are all 5 bit addresses whereas depending upon the type of the instruction the other 16 bits may be the immediate data value. Whereas uh, if this instruction is a register type ALU instruction then the significance of this 16 bits is different. That we will talk about uh, in detail uh, when we will come to the design of a respective uh, type of uh, data path. However, at this uh, stage the execute section is shown here in the second half of uh, this uh, diagram where you can see that uh, the register file is connected to the three buses and uh, these three buses are the two read buses that is the bus A and bus B and the third bus is the bus W or we have uh, already said it may be written sometimes as bus W and sometimes as bus C. So the bus A and bus B these are the read buses and these buses obtain their values from the register RA and RB. Whereas the data available onto the bus W or bus C is the result available from the arithmetic and logic unit. The basic arithmetic and logic unit as you can see one of the input to the arithmetic and logic unit is coming directly from bus A. Whereas the bus B is connected to the second operand of the ALU is provided through a multiplexer. As you can see from this diagram this is a 2 is to 1 multiplexer which has got its uh, two inputs. One is uh, coming from uh, bus 2 and the second is coming from a sign extender which is uh, used to extend the 16 bit uh, value available and this particular uh, use is either to handle the immediate data instructions or to find out the address of uh, memory reference instructions. The similarly you can see from here that uh, the data memory address input is connected directly to the output of the ALU which is in fact the value which is calculated by using the sign extended uh, value of the immediate data and adding this value to one of the contents of uh, the registers which is available on bus A. Whereas the data to the data memory is directly connected to the data bus B which is uh, a 32 bit uh, bus in this example. Similarly the output which is to be written back into the register uh, file that is also coming through a multiplexer. The role of the multiplexer over here is to select the result either from the ALU in case of uh, R type instructions and uh, 
I type instructions. Whereas, uh, in case of uh, load instructions, it accepts its data from the data memory. So, one of these two inputs to the multiplexer that is either from the ALU or from the data memory that is uh, connected to the port corresponding to the bus C or bus W as shown over here is uh, bus W. So, this way you can see from this diagram that uh, it gives us uh, the different uh, paths for the data to flow depending upon uh, what type of uh, instruction is to be executed. Now, in order to further uh, explain the working of uh, this uh, design, we will uh, have a look on to this uh, single cycle uh, data path uh, design in detail. Here this picture shows that the activities at the main data path during the execution of the add or subtract instruction, the active parts of the data path are shown in uh, different color as you can see from here and they are also represented by somewhat thicker lines. First of all, the RS and RT of the instruction are fed to RA and RB address ports of the register and cause the contents of the registers specified by RS and RT fields to be placed on bus A and bus B respectively. With the ALU control signal set to either uh, add, subtract or whatsoever is the instruction, the ALU will perform the proper operation and with the memory to set to 0, the ALU output will be placed onto the bus W. So, this basically shows us the simple design of a single cycle data path. Now, today we will stop at this stage and after a brief review of whatever we have talked about today, we will continue with our this discussion next time. Today, after a brief review of what is a design process how a data path can be divided into two parts that is the fetch circuit and the execute circuit and then what are the different components which are used. The most important components being used are the multiplexer which is used to direct uh, the data from uh, different uh, sides to the ALU or to the memory or to the register file. So, with these much, uh, this introduction about the single cycle uh, data path design, I will uh, stop here today. I will say you Allah Hafiz.